Um, so this is um, continuing some work on the Swedish Digital Archaeology Project. So this is trying to make a large collection of site archives available as a single contiguous resource for Sweden. So 15,000 site archives. Um, quite a few of them are held in Intrasys, which is something known in English heritage in Norway. Um, they will then try and integrate non-site data, archival and archaeological science data onto the same platform. And they are expecting continued growth of the 350 plus rescue sites per year that they continue to excavate. So the idea is that this will be converted into a pipeline, so that it's not a, hey, we finished, run away. It's a, hey, we finished, now take the next one, and the next one, and the next one, one a day. Right. Um, we're using CRM Archeo, uh, which is an extension of this CDUC CRM base. So this is CRM base, um, uh, event driven, difference between things that happen in time, um, so-called perdurance, uh, and things which happen outside time, uh, conceptual objects, immaterial objects, products of the human mind, and physical things that you can smash windows with. Uh, the difference being that you can't destroy a conceptual object, you can only forget it, and you can't modify a conceptual object, you can only create a new one which shows features of the old one which fucks up most digital libraries straight away. Um, then we've got uh, places, which are the mathematical constructs of where something is. You can't take a photograph of a place. You can only take a photograph of the matter that's in a place at a particular point in time. Um, temporal entities, the events are the linked time. And we allow ourselves, uh, oh, actors, so individuals or groups um, who do stuff, and we have appellations which can be applied to everything. Appellations are themselves conceptual objects, so you can have names for names. And we can categorize everything using E55 types. So we, and they're conceptual objects, so you can have types of types, which is pretty useful. The CRM is extended with a uh, set of extensions. Uh, the ones that we, I'm going to be talking about are CRM Archeo. Uh, sorry, Stephen, it looks like your microphone's been turned off real quick. Uh, <laughs> I'm not starting again. No, no. Excellent. Right. Are we finished? Am I live? It looks like it's working now. Uh, Thank you, Doug. Thanks, Doug. Sorry, we didn't check that. Okay. Can you fast forward? <laughs> right. Um, so the bits that we'll be um, concerned about are CRM inf, which is the argumentation module, which allows us to say we believe this or we don't believe it, which is unusual in most cultural heritage recording, everything is the truth. And now we can say, actually, this is complete bollocks and, and talk about that. Uh, but what I'm going to talk about particularly today is using CRM Archeo and the differentiation between the physical evidence and our interpretation of that evidence at the strat level. So differentiating between what we see in the ground and what we think it means in terms of the sequencing of the strat. Uh, so, uh, in general, CRM Archeo has got the classic EH diagram, sorry, HE diagram. Um, so, we have the, the ability to talk about lumps of earth, stratigraphic volume units, and interfaces between them, stratigraphic interfaces. If you're doing uh, artificial non single context excavation, you have uh, S2s, which are excavation interfaces, the surfaces that you produced artificially by digging, so the sides of the excavation, and if you're spitting, the spits. And the excavation processing unit is a lump of earth that you're taking out as a spit. So if you're doing a shell midden or a, a deep uh, set of uh, mud excavations in the Paleolithic cave site, where you're having to segregate by 30 centimeter slices, uh, those are the excavation processing units of the 30 centimeter slices, and each surface you produce is an excavation interface. So there's a difference between the two. And we also have the, the concept of embedding. So finds are not part of 
the stratigraphic volume units, they're embedded in stratigraphic volume units. So all things that you recover and keep are actually embedded elements. So we have this act of embedding uh, that allows us to describe that. The key thing is the difference between the stratigraphic units, which have physical relationships to each other, and the stratigraphic genesis, the process that brought that piece of stratigraphy into existence, which have stratigraphic relationships to each other, which is the sequence of stratigraphy that we're used to. You know, this came before this, came before this, came before this. What's unusual in CRM Archeo is that we set up the physical relationship saying this is above this, this touches this and so on. And then the stratigraphic relationships, we point at the physical relationships that we're using to justify our interpretation of the stratigraphy. So the top part of this diagram is our interpretation of the strat. The bottom part of the diagram is what we saw in the earth. And we differentiate between that. Now that isn't what happens in the field. We dig something, we spot it, we dig it out, and we record it. But that means if that's the way you, if that's the only way you record, you can't reinterpret the strap. You can't resequence it without changing the record. This allows us to build another set of A4 stratigraphic genesis chains on top of it, point back at the physical evidence underneath, and keep that polyvocality. I can have multiple interpretations of my strat, of, of the actual way I think this site evolved, pointing back to the, the actual things that we saw in the earth. Well, you can say you dug it wrong or you interpreted it wrong or the datings come back and you know, the pollens come back or the ceramics have come back. And it means that what we thought was a, the cut that went through the cut is actually the other way around. You know? All of those things which are really difficult to do. And the way we do this is we have a relationship between the property that links the stratigraphic sequence with the property that links the physical relationships. And this is this 13.2 uh, justified by. So here I'm saying, I believe this is the sequence because I saw this. And that's the fundamental um, building block that we're using to do this. So you get something like this where we've got a classic post hole with post fill. Um, so dig a hole, stick a pipe, uh, a pole in it, uh, wrap it in earth, pole rots out, and we've got a post pipe. And so we now have a series of stratigraphic volume units, lumps of earth, um, the cuts or the post pipe itself. Uh, all physically related to each other. And then we take the sequence of things that we assume have happened and justify it by pointing back at the physicality that we actually observed with, at the point of the travel. Right, so this is um, CRM Archeo. It's out in version two, um, ready to rock and roll. Um, and and it's, yeah, it, I think it's very powerful. So what's the nitty gritty of doing this actually on real um, data in, uh, in Sweden? So we, for focus, we're going to look at this particular context, 2300, which is a layer of wood chips with stakes driven through it, and then another layer of wood chips on top, and then some building foundation elements uh, on top of that, um, or on top of another part of it. Um, and these are you know, genuinely the Swedish records pulled. So this is what it looks like in Intrasys, uh, in Swedish, not in HE. Um, and uh, so it's a template-based uh, database, uh, which converts into a fourth normal form under the bonnet. And it allows you to record the strat, descriptions of the Earth, um, and relationships. So you have a stratigraphic matrix, traditional looking Harris matrix, and then various elements of the, in, of the interface. Um, so we can look at uh, converting, uh, this, this is traditional Stephen drawing on a piece of paper approach. Um, so I'm, what I'm going to look at is the stratigraphic relationships of 2300 to those building elements that I just talked about. So I've got uh, the, the 2300, the wood chips themselves, and then the, uh, the genesis of that, Genesis of 2300, which is, uh, this is the thing that created that. And then I can point to each of the physical relationships to the other physically touching elements, and then say, what's the sequence of those things? And justify it by pointing back at the physical. So I'm dividing my in 
my visualization of what I saw in the ground from the visualization of the stratigraphic sequence that I thus envisage from it. And I'm keeping those as separate elements in it. Uh, the red dot is just because I was couldn't draw enough squiggly lines on this piece of paper. So they're the same thing, the same um, genesis event. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, okay, right. So uh, this is that converted into something that's basically pretty. Um, so you needn't have taken a photograph of my terrible handwriting. Uh, so here we've got uh, the... So here we've got the um, AP 13.2, which is linking the this is the physical to this is the stratigraphic sequence. Um, and then uh, the thing that you were banging on about earlier, Keith, uh, this is natural. Yeah, so, so it, it, this is quite low in the excavation, as it, as it were. So that's visualizing. It's fairly straightforward to get at that from the Harris matrix. I can see here's the set of things, here's the sequence that I want them to be in. So I can, I can build this out relatively easily. Now, if I focus in on the relationship between the stake holes and the, <clears throat> the actual uh, lump of wood chip, sounds a lot like a Scottish house. <laughs> right, um, <clears throat> so focusing in on that part, and particularly on this bit here, uh, which is um, contacted over, contacted under. Uh, what this is doing is characterizing the interface between this lump of earth and the next lump of earth. So this is actually a disguised interface. It's, there is no record for the interface between this lump of earth and the post holes, or the stake holes. There's just a description of the nature of the surface of the layer and of the bottom of the layer. So these are disguised pieces of documentation. So we need to pull those out. Uh, and so this is the sequence that we end up with. So here's my stake hole with an upper surface, which is characterized, and a lower surface, which is characterized. And this is the wood chip uh, with the upper surface characterized and the lower surface characterized by reference to a thesaurus of, of acceptable terms. So not terribly difficult to understand what's going on, really. But if I take this and what I'd just done, I end up Oh, so that's a, the visualization of it looking a bit neater for uh, photographs. Uh, and so this is the set of physical relationships. That's, this is the bottom of the layer, so the, the, the interface. This is the wood chip. This is the top of it, the interface. This is the bottom interface of the stake hole. This is the stake hole. This is the top interface of the stake hole, as identified in the record. Now I want to talk about the strat. Now it gets a little bit more complicated because now I'm having to talk about the genesis of um, the individual bits. Oh, I didn't do the I didn't finish updating the typos here. Right. Uh, so this is uh, 2300 Lowe's genesis and so on. Um, and the 13.2s, which link me from the physical relationships back to the stratigraphic relationships. Um, what I'm seeing here is that this level of complexity blows most archaeologists' mind. But the nitty-gritty is that's what's in the record. It's just heavily disguised in individual fields. So what we're going to be doing is blowing that out for each different template, so each different way sites have been recorded in Sweden, we're going to build this mapping, and then we can automatically process the databases and produce CRM archaeo data ready to be served as linked open data. So um, the conclusion then is CRM Archeo allows, supports the splitting of the evidence from the interpretation at this very low level. It, it also provides mechanisms for grouping things into the set of things into a post hole or the set of things into a building. All, all of those kinds of higher level constructs are there as well. What we need to make sure we're clear about is what those fields in our recording systems actually mean in the practice in a particular sequence of practicing. So this, this excavation team works this way. This is the way they've used those fields because it may change the mapping between 
what interpretation and what's physically there. Did it.